I bet you've heard about Apollo 11, but have you heard about Apollo 12? I'm going to show you the capsule and so many cool things about it. Hey, I'm John Williams, and can you guess where I am? I'm at the Virginia Air and Space Center in Hampton, Virginia, and right next to me is the Apollo 12 capsule, an amazing other relics of aviation and space. So I have visited the, the Apollo 11 capsule and the Apollo 16 capsule, and it's so great to be standing next to the Apollo 12 capsule. Now, not many people know about Apollo 12. Apollo 12 launched right after Apollo 11, about four months after it. It's because it was the backup mission to Apollo 11, because as President Kennedy said right here, We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. He wanted us to go to the moon by the end of the decade and land a man on it. So if Apollo 11 failed in 1969, we had Apollo 12 as a backup, but Apollo 11 didn't fail. So not many people know about Apollo 12. So the crew was Alan Bean, Charles P. Conrad, and Richard Gordon. And they, and they named this capsule the Yankee Clipper, along with the lunar module, Intrepid. So I'd just like to show you what's really cool about this capsule and since it's right here in front of me, there's a million things that are amazing about it. So if you look there, you can see two holes and a third one. Those are RCS control thrusters. Basically, those would ignite a small amount of fuel which would rotate the capsule or give it a different direction. So in case it was coming in at the Earth like this with the capsule's um, heat shield facing away, they could flip it around and it would come in. So if we also come around here, you can see at the bottom and all around the capsule, we have this honeycomb looking like pattern. And each of the, each of bit, each little hole of honeycomb was actually individually injected with some fluid which hardened and during re-entry, it would burn off taking heat away with it until they made it back to, into the ocean. And if we also come over here, you can just see how black and charred it is from re-entry. Now, it might also look a little bit more worn. If you look under there and even in the mirror, you can see that there are chunks missing. And those chunks that are missing are actually from people ripping them off when these things were on display. Right after the Apollo 11 mission and all the other Apollo missions, these capsules were just loaned to museums and they didn't put a barrier between us and the capsule. They just put it out in the open. People were even allowed to get inside the capsules. I wish I could have. But basically, they walked up and they just ripped parts off of it. It's pretty sad, but back then, everything space related was just junk. And if we also see on the reentry thing, sorry, you have these small circles. Each of those circles were little repairs made by scientists when they were testing the capsule. After they were individually injected the honeycomb, the honeycomb, if there were any air holes, they always cut that part out and then they placed a cylinder in there to make sure that the heat did not reach the astronauts and then they died. Now, if we also come and look at the windows up here, they're very, very strong and probably a state-of-the-art material for 1969. If you come and look at this window over here, there are some numbers on it. Each of those are a degree, so when the astronauts were firing, if the astronauts had to do, use some experiments in which they are pointing at stars, they could use those little lines as directions to keep them aligned on stars so they could use experiments, interestingly. Now, we have the mission, sorry, one more thing I would like to point out is that there were handlebars right here, and these handlebars would have probably been used for the divers to come and grab the capsule and hook up a life, life raft to it so they could get the astronauts out. Now, these handlebars have been, for some reason, removed. I would not know why, but it's a small detail that's very interesting because wherever those handlebars are now, they're relics. And if you look inside, you can see an astronaut or a fake astronaut in the seat of where 
the pilot would have sat for the command module. And if you also look, you can see a bunch of switches. You can even see a keypad. And the inside is pretty white and clean. That probably means they preserved this capsule very much well over its lifetime here. Please subscribe, share our videos, and excitement about space with everyone.